Good afternoon and welcome to the Using Learning Paths in a Virtual World webinar. I'm going to give another minute or so as I see people filing in still. All right, just another minute or so. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, hopefully you're not having any audio problems. If you are having audio problems, there's a little help on the, uh, the slide being shown right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So again, welcome to the Using Learning Paths in the Virtual World webinar. My name is Scott Gaglione. I'm a pedagogical advisor with this learning. And let's get started. So this webinar is for you if you are a teacher that uses this learning and wants to enable self-pacing for your students or if you are a school or district leader looking to enable teachers to differentiate instruction via its learning. By the end of this webinar, you will learn about the power of learning paths and the various options available when creating them. And you will also understand ways to incorporate learning paths into your instructional material. So what is a learning path? A learning path is a means for students to get to the same destination by traveling the road that's best for them at their own pace. It's a set of resources, checkpoints, and simple, simple if-then logic. For example, at the end of the path, the students will understand differentiation in math, and there are several resources and activities or assessments in the steps leading to that goal. So how do we create a learning path? So there are two ways to create a learning path in its learning. One way is to create a folder of resources and then change the folder type to a learning path folder. The second way to create a learning path is to create all of your resources and then add a learning path. On the next few slides, I will walk you through the steps to create a learning path using either option. First, I will show you how to create a learning path by creating a regular folder of resources. The first step is to create the resources in a regular folder. The resources you create will be dependent upon the goal you have for using the learning path tool. As you can see in the image on this slide, this learning path includes a pretest, a page, an assignment, a link, and finally a task. After you have created all of your resources, next you will want to click on the ellipsis in the upper right corner of the regular folder. You will select Make Learning Path. Since the first item in the learning path is a pretest, I can select a score to use as a gate to determine where the student moves after completing the test. In this example, if the student scores above 90%, they will go to the end of the path. If they do not, they will progress through the resource steps until they reach the end. After you have selected the criteria for students to meet to move to the next step in the learning path, click on Complete Path. Then review the path before toggling Visible to Students. If you do not toggle Visible to Students, your students will not be able to access the learning path.
The second way to create a learning path is to use the add a learning path resource. Similar to the other way to create a learning path where you created a regular folder, you will begin by creating the resources you would like to use for your learning path in a folder. This time, however, once you have created all of your resources for the learning path, you will click add and select learning path. After clicking on add learning path, the next thing you will want to do is click on new learning path and then give it a title. If you do not change the name of the learning path, it will be named new learning path. So make sure to change the title of your learning path. After changing the name of your learning path, you can go and add your resources to the learning path. As you can see, you have many options for what to add to the learning path. You can select files from your Google Drive, your OneDrive, or your computer. You can also select items from your course or search for and select resources from the library. Since I have already created the resources I would like to use for my learning path, I will select them from my course and then check the box next to the item I would like to add to my learning path. I can continue to add resources to my learning path until I've added all of the resources to this learning path. When adding a resource or activity to my learning path, I will determine the criteria for the students to meet prior to moving on to the next step in my learning path. So in this example, it's a test, and I decided to set it that if student scores at a certain level, they will move to step three, otherwise they will move to step two. After I have added all of my resources and activities to my learning path, and set the criteria for each step, I will click on complete path and review the path before toggling it visible to students. Now you know the two different ways to create learning paths in this learning. Now I'd like to share a few ticks, tricks and tips for creating a learning path. It's possible to add more steps to your learning path by clicking add step button at the bottom. Please note that new steps will always be added at the bottom of your learning path. But you can click, you can drag and drop them to another position by hovering on the step and then clicking and holding the three dots on the far right side and dragging the step to where you would like it to be. Now by default, all steps will allow the student to move to the next step when the resources completed. So for notes, pages, files, and links, that means they can move on to the next step once they have opened or viewed the resource. For tests, assignments, and tasks, the student needs to complete the activity before they can move on. For those activities that can be assessed, the teacher can alternatively point to a different step based on those results. Now there are a few content limitations in the learning path. Not all content can be added. Here are a few categories of content that cannot be added to your learning path. Resources that cannot be copied between courses, for example, the hangman game, or activities with at least one answer or assessment. You would either have to remove the results from these activities or make a copy without the results and use that in your learning path. In addition, group assignments will be changed to individual assignments. This has been chosen to exclude group, exclude group assignments as they provide a student, prevent a student from moving on at their own pace. At the beginning, I showed you how to turn a regular folder into a learning path folder, but it's also possible to turn a learning path back into a regular folder. You would simply click the ellipsis in the learning path and choose make normal folder. This will not affect the results any students might have on the activities on the path. Finally, I'd like to share a few examples of how you might use a learning path with your students. This first example is 
titled Reviewing the Roaring Twenties, and this is for the high school level. As you can see, there's a pretest, and if the student scores at least 90, they move to the finish. Otherwise, they'll move through the different resources. There's a page, and then an assignment, a link, and finally a task. This example is also for high school. This is a list of resources. So the teacher has gone and vetted these resources and created a learning path. And basically, if the student uh, reads the resources, uh, they will move on to the next step or they watch the video, for example, in step two, they can move to the next step. You can see there's an assignment in there, a couple of PowerPoints and a summary page at the end. This is an example of a learning path from the elementary level for Genius Hour. And so for this, uh, the students would simply uh, read or view the note, participate in the discussion board in step two, and then complete an assignment in step three. This example is also for elementary school and it's about prime and composite numbers. Similar to my first example, this is, um, includes a pretest, and the student will move to step four if they score above a 90%. Otherwise, they will work through resources and then take the test again in step three. All students would complete this by finishing step four, which is an assignment. Finally, I have an example on context clues for grades three through five. And this one includes some content from the library, like the first step as a video on context clues. And then the student would take uh, test one. And if they score at least 90%, they skip all the way down to step eight. Otherwise they'll move through the videos and other resources and take a second chance on that same test. All students would finish up with the closure on step nine. So with that, that's the end of uh, my discussion here about learning paths, and I'd like to open it up to any questions we may have. We don't have any questions just yet, so we'll give uh, folks some time to pose their questions. You know, one of the questions that we had yesterday uh, that may be, a, you know, something that these folks would like to hear about is uh, the difference between the play plan and the learning path. I don't know if you remember that question, Rachel. That was yep. a good one. Yep. Yeah, so uh, so the, the play path, play path, well, I'm combining words now. The play plan is the functionality on the overview page uh, for students that when they go uh, to the course in the planner section of the overview page, they see a start button. And so similar to a learning path, it kind of sets up a path for the students to move through and a question was asked yesterday how a learning path would be a better alternative than the play plan and my answer yesterday and it's going to be the same answer today because i haven't changed my mind is that it's the criteria that you can set for when you're allowing students to move from one step to another that really in my view makes the learning path a uh, better alternative when you're looking at <clears throat> excuse me looking at setting up resources for students to kind of move through in the platform. Okay. All right, so, oh, as well. You just did such a good job that there are no questions. <laughs> I see that. That's uh, guess that's a good problem to have. Um, what I can do is uh, maybe Rachel, would you be able to put the uh, YouTube channel, uh, a, a YouTube channel in the chat, the URL? Yep. Coming. All right. So uh, while we wait for some questions here, let me just show you um, our YouTube channel. There are all kinds of uh, tutorials and 
webinars um, and demos, how to's for you to access. So that's uh, at the uh, first, I'm sorry, in the chat window, Rachel has put the YouTube address for us. And the nice thing about these videos is the tutorials are short. So three, four, five minutes, and they really focus on a, a singular, um, singular topic. Uh, so it's very timely. I'm also going to put, Scott, in just a second, the um, link to the remote learning webinars um, and talk about the arc. Uh, can you talk about the archive a little bit that there are, if they haven't made it to mm -hmm. our other webinars that they're there? Nope, that's the wrong, that's the wrong website, Scott. I should probably learn how to spell too. Um, doing great today. Uh, now I'm putting in other numbers. What in the world? I put it in the chat if you want to just click there. Here I am. Okay. All right, so this is our uh, itslearning.com website. Uh, we have right down here, you see remote learning webinars. Uh, Rachel put the URL in the chat window. Uh, so what you can see here are webinars that we have this week. I believe the only one outstanding is one coming up at uh, four o'clock Eastern about parents in its learning, but we also have a webinar archive. So if I click right here on the webinar archive option, these are some webinars that we've done um, over the last month or so. Uh, this, you know, talking about uh, navigation basics, uh, adding courses or participants, the plans tool which in my view is one of the be uh, best tools that we have in the platform. It's so good, it needs two parts. Um, how to add video and audio to lessons. This talks about the rich text editor, and that's not just for teachers. Don't forget students can use that in the rich text editor as well. We talked about some of the it's learning reports to monitor your students. And then we have one uh, done by yours truly about teaching primary students in a virtual world. And then one done by my trusty assistant, Rachel, saying engaged, connected, and moving in a virtual world. So as you can see, all these webinars are recorded and can be played right here, along with being able to download any handouts that are referenced in the webinar. All right, Scott, we did have a question from Diana, and it might be the first page of your um, presentation, but she said, could I see that? First page, I'm sorry, I was connected a little late. First page, uh, would it be this page? Well, if it's webinars for you, I'm not sure. Or is she looking for more of what is a learning path? Maybe she wants Perhaps. to see what a learning path is. That might be it. Oh, she wants I'll to know how to turn on, turn on the path. So maybe you could just review that 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 piece since we have some time. Yeah. Um, so as you uh, as I mentioned, you can create it using two ways, either through the regular folder, which I'm going to quickly go through here. But the key here is when you're finished, you want to review this step and make sure you click complete path here, and then that next step is where you not, uh, toggle it to be visible to students. Because if you don't do that, it'll be inactive and the students will not be able to see it. So hopefully, Diana, that answered your question. If not, uh, I can try a third time and hopefully I'll be successful. All right, we have an, uh, another uh, question, which is a good one. Will I be able to access this webinar when it's over? Uh, and maybe yes. just so, review what they will receive and, and that sort of thing. What they will receive. Yes, yeah, so uh, within 24 hours, you'll get an email that will send you the recording of this webinar. And then any resources from this webinar uh, will be included. Um, so you'll be able to access that along with uh, it being uploaded to our website for the remote learning webinar.
Why, thank you, Scott. Lots of thank yous. You're, <laughs> you're welcome. Yep. All right. Uh, maybe we'll give wait another just a, yeah, yeah, I gave another minute or two to see if anything else pops up. So I know one of the other questions we've gotten is about uh, being able to use branching in a learning path. And so uh, what's released right now is the linear path that you can see, and you can use the test tool to have students bypass steps. Um, further development will occur at some point. Um, of course, with the current situation in, in, the, in the world, um, it'll be hard to say exactly when that new functionality will be released. I don't see any more questions coming in. All right. Well, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation. If you have a question, here is the email address that you can send it to, briefing at itslearning.com. And we will certainly follow up and assist you with whatever your needs may be. I'd like to thank everyone for their time today. And I hope everyone stays safe. Thank you so much.